Hello, and welcome to Nextstar's video series on the Salesforce Developer Workbooks. In this track, we'll be walking you through the Apex Workbook. This video covers Chapter 1, Orientation, Tutorials 1 through 4. Force.com Apex is a strongly typed, object-oriented programming language that allows you to write code that executes on the Force.com platform. Out of the box, Force.com provides a lot of high-level services, such as web services, scheduling of code execution, batch processing, and triggers, all of which require you to write Apex. This orientation lesson will help you prepare your Force.com development environment to begin working through the Apex workbook. To begin, log into your Salesforce developer account. If you do not have one, create one before moving forward. The first thing we're going to do is create some custom objects in our environment. These objects are used in other workbooks and represent objects used to manage a warehouse. If you've already completed tutorials 1, 2, and 3 in the force.com workbook, you may skip the following step. Everyone else should open a new tab in their browser and go to bit.ly bit.ly slash Apex Workbook Package 1 underscore 4. This is going to allow us to install a package that will provide the custom objects for us. So from this page, we'll click Continue. Then the next button. Next, and install. You may see the following screen. It will let you know that your force.com environment is processing the package and installing the custom objects. Now we're going to go back to setup while this is installing. Once you receive the email notifying you that the Apex workbook package has been installed, you can verify this by going to Installed Packages, and you'll see the Apex workbook listed here. Now if we click into this, then go to View Components, we'll see our custom objects that have been added, along with various Apex classes and custom fields. Now that we've got our custom objects added to our environment, the next thing we're going to take a look at is the developer console. The developer console acts as a window into your force.com environment and allows you to have greater visibility into your Apex code as you work and develop in your environment. To activate the developer console, click the pull down menu on your name and select Developer Console. This is your first time opening the Developer Console. You can take a tour of the Developer Console features by clicking Start Tour. You can open the Developer Console at any time during your session with your Force.com environment. The Developer Console can look pretty overwhelming, but it's just a collection of tools to help you work with your code. First thing we're going to do is we're going to write a simple Apex statement and have you execute it through the console. To do that, I'm going to click Debug, click Open to Execute Anonymous Window. So open that, and you're going to type what I have here, to system.debug, parens, hello world, close parentheses. Now go ahead and check Open Log and click Execute. And now we're in the log inspector. We've gone ahead and we've run our Apex statement. And here are the logs associated with what we just did. Now there's a lot of information here. Let's go ahead and click this checkbox that says debug only. And we'll see our statement that we did. Hello world. Now we're going to leave that filter just to kind of keep all the other stuff out of our way and we're going to go ahead and try another simple statement. Let's go back to debug, open anonymous window 
and I want you to add a couple couple lines to this this command. I say hello world and now we're gonna also output system dot now and system dot now plus ten. Now system dot now that is the current day and time, the current date and time, and system dot now plus ten should add ten days to the date that it gets returned by system dot now. So we're gonna go ahead and execute this as well. And now we've got the logs for this new job we just ran. Let's go ahead and click debug only and see our results. Hello world. And we've got here May 14th, 2014, at the time of 411. And then the second line where we added 10 days to it, you'll see it says May 24th, just 10 days from now. So that's just a very simple example of the how to use the developer console to run Apex statements. We are going to be working extensively with the developer console and it's going to help us as we work through our Apex lessons to gain insight on what we're doing and to help us find problems and work through them in our course of development. So the next thing we're going to do in the developer console is we're going to leverage those custom objects we created using the, uh, the Apex workbook package and we're going to load some sample data into our force.com environment that we're going to work with through the course of this lesson. What we'll do is go back to debug, open, a non, open execute anonymous window, and in here we're going to type Apex workbook load data and say execute. Now that's gone ahead and populated our force.com environment with some sample data from the Apex workbook package that's going to help us going forward. Now we can go ahead and close the developer console and go back to our main, main setup page. Now we're ready to write our first Apex class. Since Apex is an object-oriented programming language, much of the Apex code you will write will be contained within class. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the developer console and from the developer console we're going to select file new apex class. As the name of the class we're going to call it hello world. Now in our new hello world class we're going to add a static method that looks a little like this. And then we're going to add an instant me instance method that looks very similar. Now we've got our first Apex class. It's got two methods, say you, which will print the string you, and say me, that'll print the string me. Now, the static method and the instance methods are different, and I'm going to show you what makes them different with the next step. So let's call some of these methods using our open execute anonymous window. So we're going to go back to this execution window and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to execute the say you method. We can do that. Do that by calling it just like that. We'll say hello world class dot say you and if we execute that We can jump over here, it's filtered by debug. And we've got you, just like we expect. Let's jump back to our class here. And now this time I'm gonna run, I'm gonna try to run say me. And I'll show you what happens here. So, 
method does not exist or incorrect signature say me okay so that gave me an error and the reason it did is because now say you method is static that does not require an instance of hello world to exist in order for me to call this method however say me is an instance method so this will be tied to a, a this needs to be tied to an instance of the hello world class that exists. So in order to call say me, we'll have to do this. Those of you familiar with Java or any other object oriented language, this will look very familiar. So we're going to create a new instance of hello world called HW. And now Now that I've created an instance of hello world, the say me method should be available. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And there you go. So we've just created our first Apex class called hello world with both a static and instance methods as members. And we've worked through those methods with the developer console to see how they both work. I'm going to show you one more way to create Apex classes, and that's using the Salesforce user interface. So we can go ahead and close the developer console for right now. And then from setup, we're going to select develop Apex classes. We're going to click new. In the editor pane, we're going to add this snippet of code. Public class message maker. Go ahead and click quick save here. Now you could have clicked save, but if you click save, it's going to close you out of the editor. We want to stay in the editor, so quick save is better for right now. Now we're going to add the following little bit of code to our new class. And this is a static method that returns a string, and it's called hello message. And it returns the string, you say goodbye, I say hello. Let's go ahead and click save. And now we've just created another new Apex class using the Salesforce UI. Now we can go ahead and show that that works. We can go back to our developer console. we can go ahead and call what we just did. We can say, since it's a static method, we can say message maker dot hello message. Actually, we'll do it like this. We'll say, We're going to take the string the message maker returns from its hello message method and pump that into a debug statement and execute that. And there you go. So I've just showed you two different ways we can create Apex classes and gave you a tour around the developer console. In our next video, we're going to cover chapter two, tutorial five, primitive data types and variables. Thank you for joining us. For more great content, click the subscribe to us on YouTube. Thank you.